Hi, this is Jason Nickleby, coordinator of officials with the Minnesota State High School League, and this is football rule study train tape number five. I'm going to take a look at rule nine and ten this week, focusing on those rules and then pulling those all together with the other rules that we've covered so far. So hopefully these tapes have been helpful for you as we take a look at the rule book, get our nose in the book, pull together mechanics, philosophy, so that we can apply these successfully on Friday nights in our games. So uh, with that, we'll take a look at Rule 9 and Rule 10. Okay, Rule 9 and 10, we're looking at holding, illegal blocks, legal personal contact, unsportsmanlike conduct, a big chunk of that, and then rounds it out with illegal participation, kicking and batting. So pretty big fouls, 15-yard, uh, 10-yard variety um, that can set teams back, set you towards disqualification. So really key to understand those. And then penalty enforcement and basic spots is rule 10 and um, it seems simple enough that's pretty much the gist of rule 10 but again um, not so simple pretty difficult uh, rule to understand but one we need to have down pat to keep our credibility as a crew alive so pull rule 9 and 10 together um, so we can be successful and we'll take a look at each rule Rule 9, conduct of players and others, this is the rule that non-officials think of as the rule. So, you know, you're talking about unsportsmanlike conduct, personal fouls, illegal personal contact, that, that sort of thing. And so when non-officials think about rules, that's what they think about. They think about late hits and they think about um, telling the official to go take a hike, that kind of thing, versus illegal formation, post-scrimmage kick, and other kinds of rules so um, still an important rule to know um, these are the big ticket items um, unsportsmanlike conduct um, legal personal contact remember it's not the same as a personal file for disqualification purposes you need to have uh, two UNS files versus two uh, personal files for DQ of course you can have a disqualification on a personal file if it's flagrant and then it also includes illegal participation, batting, and kicking um, in Rule 9. So these are pretty important uh, rules to understand and know how to apply because these are the big ticket ones, 10-yard, 15-yard fouls, uh, or penalties rather, that we need to understand. You know, If you miss 5-yard fouls, um, no one's really going to be too worked up about that, but they will get a little upset if we miss 15 yard uh, variety of uh, fouls so um, good ones to know heavily relies on definitions so make sure that you tie those two together rule 10 enforcement of penalties obviously we need to enforce penalties correctly we need to understand enforcement spots most of our errors on enforcement are due to not starting at the correct spot whether it's at the middle of the field or a hash or uh, end of the run, um, previous spot, whatever the case may be, PSK, um, you know, we need to go from the right spot. We could enforce the correct amount of yardage, but if we don't do it from the correct spot, that could be a huge difference in application. And then it talks about double fouls, multiple fouls, what to do with those. And then we have some special enforcements as well, and we need to know what to do with those. Um, this is our baby as officials. Um, whole crew umpire maybe in particular but whole crew this is our baby um, we could do everything right but if we can force penalties correctly um, our credibility is lost and uh, and it's really tough to recover from that so really important to understand enforcement of penalties what spot to enforce them from and uh, make sure that we do that accurately and good, use good mechanics to confirm your penalty enforcement with your crewmates Okay, we're going to take a look at a few situations in Rule 9 and 10. Again, not the most important situations from the casebook, just a couple situations to get you thinking about these rules and how they apply. Uh, many other situations can be involved. Take a look at the casebook, rule book, pull them all together. Um, so the first one here, 9-3-2, A84 gets set as a split end outside of the defensive end and linebacker. Following the snap, a84 blocks towards the ball on either the defensive end B94 or B55, the linebacker. A84 blocks A, B94 above the waist from the front, or B, B55 below the waist from the front, or C, 
B94 with his hands on the side of B94's shoulder pads. Legal block in A and C, but we would have an illegal block below the waist in B. So important to know when we can block uh, below the waist restrictions, uh, linemen, um, in the free blocking zone, ball in the zone, when it disintegrates, all those. Um, as we mentioned earlier, Rule 9 heavily relies on definitions, so you have to understand the definitions in Rule 2 so you can pull them into Rule 9 um, to figure out uh, whether a block is legal or illegal and then um, what to do with that, that play if that occurs. Situation 937, during a free kick, K27 initiates contact against R44 prior to the ball traveling past the receiving team's restraining line. No member of Team R initiated a block against K in the neutral zone. This would be a live ball foul for an illegal block. If the distance penalty is accepted, it is R's choice to have the penalty enforced from the succeeding spot or to have it enforced from the previous spot with a re-kick by a Team K, and that's 10-4-2 exception. So a couple things involved in this. First, something that we struggle with at all levels of football is getting illegal blocks by K in particularly in onside kick situations. Um, so we need to understand the restrictions, when they can make contact, when can't they, and um, make sure that we are really uh, on top of our mechanics and who needs to see these blocks um, to get those. They're really tough. It's really hard uh, to get those. I understand that. Um, but that's, that's a challenge that we have at all levels of football, and we just need to uh, do our best mechanically uh, to see what we need to see so that we can get these plays correct. And then the second piece of this is, um, we've mentioned it before, point of emphasis nationally is to remember um, our options on fouls on K when R is next to put the ball in play. So um, in years past, we used to decline this or put it on the previous spot. Now they have a choice of succeeding spot or make them re-kick. So um, as a crew, make sure we don't forget this aspect of penalty enforcement. It's something really common to miss. It's a point of emphasis for a reason. Um, if you're the off guy, you're probably the best, best person um, to come in and remind the crew, hey, they get succeeding spot, or um, we can do a previous spot enforcement and have them re-kick. 9-5-2 situation. After A87 carries the ball into B's end zone, he A throws the ball into the bleachers, or B kicks the ball from the field, or C spikes the ball to the ground with force, or D is knocked down by B17 clearly after the ball is dead. This would be an unsportsmanlike conduct foul in A, B, and C. The touchdown counts and team A will be penalized 15 yards on the try or on the subsequent kickoff. In D, B's contact foul will be penalized on the try or on the subsequent kickoff. And that's 942B, 952A, B, and C, and 1044B. So, um, big thing to remember with this unsportsmanlike conduct foul is going to be enforced on the try or the subsequent kickoff. We're not taking the touchdown way. That's a pretty common mistake that we make at um, the high school level for sure. Um, and, of course, it always happens on the game-winning touchdown. We end up wiping it out and making it a spot foul, and that's not how we enforce these. So really key to know um, how to enforce unsportsmanlike conduct fouls. And then the second thing is unsportsmanlike conduct fouls, illegal personal contact, let's make them earn it. Make these big and obvious, clear. Um, don't ticky-tack on these ones. These are 15-yard fouls, uh, penalties, um, number one, number two, disqualification it becomes a factor so we want to make sure that these are good make them count um, and if they do and they earn it then give it to them okay taking a look at some situations from rule 10 10 1 1 where is the ball spotted following penalty acceptance when it is snapped from the right side hash mark and the run ends in the left side zone and the foul is a illegal motion by a1 or B, holding by A1 in the middle of the field behind the end of the run, or C, grasping the face mask by B23 in making the tackle. In A, it will be spotted at the right side hash mark. 
In B, it is spotted in the middle of the field since the enforcement spot was the spot of the foul. And in C, it will be spotted at the left hash mark. So in A, we're enforcing from the previous spot. The previous spot was the right side hash mark. So we're going to enforce from there. In B, we had a holding foul in the middle of the field, and it's behind the end of the run, so we're going to enforce it from that spot of the foul. In C, it's spotted at the left, the left hash mark because we are going to go from the end of the run. The end of the run ended in the left side zone, so we're going to bring it into the left hash mark. So, um, again, enforcement spot and where we start and where we end up, very important. Penalty enforcement, that's our baby, again. Um, if we can't do penalty enforcement correctly, uh, credibility, credibility as a crew really um, gets hampered. So make sure we're on top of this. If you think something's wrong as a crew, penalty enforcement-wise, say something. Don't let the crew burn when you think there's an error. Make sure you step up and say something if you think that uh, the crew is off. Um, we need to make sure that we do penalty enforcements correctly. 10 to one situation, fourth and five from the K-20. K is in an illegal formation at the snap. While K-14's punt is in flight beyond the expanded neutral zone, R-23 blocks K-43 in the back at the 50-yard line. R-82 catches the kick at the R-36 and returns it for a touchdown. This is a post-scrimmage kick foul by Team R. Therefore, R may decline the penalty for K's foul and keep the ball after enforcement of the 10-yard penalty for the block in the back or it may accept the penalty against K, thereby creating a double foul, in which case the down will be replayed. And that's 10 one b So um, the, key here, the key here is under post-scrimmage kick rules, Team R is treated like they got the ball with clean hands. So they have the ability to decline that penalty against K, keep the ball. They'll still get the penalty in force against them, but they get to keep the ball. Um, if they decide that it's more advantageous for them to just replay the down, they can accept case uh, penalty for their foul, have a double foul, and then replay the down. That's their choice. So we'll want to go to Team R to get their choice, um, get the coaches involved, give them all the options, where the penalty would be enforced from, and then also that double foul, uh, replaying the down, is a option for them so make sure we go through all the options with the teams 10 4 4 with third and seven from the a25 a23 advances to the a35 where he fumbles before a23 fumbles a79 held b55 at the a40 a80 recovers a fumble at the a30 if b accepts the holding penalty where will the basic spot for the penalty enforcement be the basic spot is the spot where the run ended, which is the A35. Team A would still have third and seven at the A25, and that brings into play 241.8. So we talked about this in one of our other training tapes about enforcement from the end of the run in fumble situations. Um, so understand enforcement spots as it relates to running plays, loose ball plays, kicking plays, post scrimmage kick, um, etc. So um, a lot of factors. A lot of variables. That's what makes it challenging and difficult, but I know that we're up to the challenge, but we want to make sure that we understand basic spots as it relates to penalty enforcement. That's the key. Okay, that's rule 9 and 10. Um, again, always looking at how we can get better as it relates to our rules knowledge, mechanics, philosophies, and pulling them all together. So, the key is if we're going to get any fouls at all in a game, we need to get the ones in Rule 9. Again, we talked about this earlier, big ticket items, 10, 15-yard penalties, um, several of which count towards disqualification. These are, these are key, key fouls to get, game control fouls. If we let these get away from us, the game will get away from us. So if we call anything at all, um, the ones in Rule 9 are really key uh, to get. Um, Talked about this several times already. Penalty enforcement is our baby. Our credibility as a crew uh, relies on our penalty enforcement accuracy. Um, focus on your basics, you know, your mechanics, penalty enforcement, confirming with the line of scrimmage official um, as the umpire, um, confirming with both line of scrimmage officials before we put it down. And we talked about it er earlier, if you see something, 
say something. If something is completely off with a penalty enforcement and you believe there's an error, stop the game. I'd rather that you stop and talk about it for 10 minutes and get it right than leave it for the locker room, um, which does us no good at that point. So make sure that you say something if you think there's an error. And then finally, with penalty enforcement especially, but with all of our officiating in any sport, when we get in trouble, it's because we go too fast. Um, So just slow yourself down. Remember your process every time we have a foul to report to the referee. And referee, when it's your foul, have your umpire slow you down. Um, We get going too fast. We start talking a mile a minute, and then that's when we make mistakes. So the key to eliminating mistakes or at least reducing the number of mistakes is we need to slow down. Um, Again, that's our biggest error at all levels of football. Been there, done that. Um, gone too fast and gotten burnt. So um, if there's anything we do um, as a crew mechanically, uh, my suggestion is just work on slowing yourself uh, way down. And uh, that's Rule 9 and 10. Again, we'll take a look at Rule 1 and the fundamentals next week, and that will wrap up our NFHS Rule Series.